week-long activity is to mark the National Bilingualism Day that's built for Friday this week opens today across the national territory. And Joseph Bichel, some of the governor of the literal region, told students and pupils in the region that being a bilingual student or a pupil is an added advantage as a Cameroonian citizen. And also in this newscast, we talk about a fatal road accident that claimed the life of a motorbike rider in a Bolova South region of Cameroon. Plus, potential companies in the country say sponsoring League One and Two championship is a big risk that they cannot afford to bear. These are headlines. Details and more just in a moment. Good evening to you viewers. Welcome back from the weekend. You are watching the 6 p.m. newscast on Equinox Television. We begin right in the south region of the country as we announced in the headlines. We talk about a fatal road accident that claimed the life of a motorbike rider in that part of the country. The rider who was believed to have caused the incident, it should be noted that the incident followed a head-on between two motorbike riders. The one who is said to have caused the incident is still on the run, as Pamela Dukong tells us in the following report. The accident occurred in the evening when there was heavy traffic at the Langdimi runabout in Boloa. Witnesses say the victim was coming from Makele direction of the central town and was violently hit by another bike rider who was attempting to take a bend around the same roundabout in an attempt to avoid a collision. The victim jumped off his bike and fell with his forehead on the pedestrian part of the road causing his head to split open. The bike of the victim overturned several times through a long distance. The accident paralyzed circulation in the town as the population rushed to the scene to feed their eyes. Many questioned why bike riders continue to go without helmets. The victim is said to have been riding without putting on a helmet. The man who caused the accident escaped without being identified. Meanwhile, the corpse has been transported to a Bolo Regional Hospital and the family members of the victim are left in desolation. This time around is in the southwest region of Cameroon. The senior divisional officer for FACO has told taxi drivers in the Buya subdivision not to be bought over by politicians. His declaration or the declaration of Zhang Fua is coming after a sit down strike between or by Buya taxi drivers after one of them was harassed by a control officer from the southwest region of Cameroon. Let's have the details of the report with Derek Jato. Buya taxi drivers went on strike. A retired officer caused the unrest. <laughs> Luis explains that a retired officer pulled him out of his taxi, seized his car keys, and ran with the taxi even with doors open, sparking the riot on the street of Boya. The Boya divisional officer came down to restore order. May we not say no disorder, not ever pay, and no the the worries where we will not get them, and even begged them to leave, but did not succeed, and then left. We have been witnessing the taxi drivers in your strike now for the past two hours. The taxi drivers here in Boya say they have problems, must be solved now. If not, they will not go on the street. And circulation has been perturbed with the consequences enormous. But we cannot go home because the taxes are not so what do we have to do? Let's go, you know. It's getting crazy and the guys are getting violent, that's my problem. When the senior divisional officer for FACO, with him, the mayor of Buya Council, came, he said the Buya taxi drivers should not allow politicians to use them and hinder President Paul Bia's visit to the town. Don't be manipulated by, us, by those people who have even lost their life. And pleaded with the angry Cameroonians to give the administration time to study the matter. 
Their demands are clear. You have your vehicles and all documents are there. They will arrest you on the road and that's 1,000 from Rotier. We are reading that Rotier off the road. Go to the highway, Rotier, please. Just a note after the report there by Derek Jato that Kam has returned to the Boya subdivision after the protest demonstration by taxi drivers. Now we remain in that part of the country still with Derek to talk about seven months after an inter-village conflict between the Njirong and Tubo villages of the Ndonga Mantum division. Victims that were rendered homeless say that they are living like refugees in their own country. They are calling on the government and also international bodies to come to their rescue. Derek Jato has more. In front of the Ntumbo Palace, a village in the northwest region, this woman burst into tears, haunted by sad memories of an intervillage conflict that took place here seven months ago. I made them that they work out with guns, them the series who they follow we with guns. I stand to know nothing, no day for get chop for picking the highway. They stand to at the big chop now for big. Her story is familiar in this part of the country where people are still going through the agony of the conflict. I get the one for, for doing where they can't take one. I get 200 back all the right. They don't take all. I don't give me anything now. I don't know me how to do before I pay that money. Seven months ago, an intervillage conflict took place here between Tumbo and Njiron villages on who own this land. 60 years, how are she done for the, mm -hmm. for the 60 years where we did the and Tumbo man been get depressed. This traditional roller recount what happened that on fateful July 2013. I made a camp, I made a camp to drive with the cash people, the beat them, they go keep them for school. Even me, they take me and say they go kill them. It is reported that the Nigerian people originated the conflict, burning down houses. And today, victims say they now live like refugees in their country. Reasons why they are calling on the government and the international bodies to come to their rescue. Uh, the Minister of Territorial Administration may enter into this matter. Make uh, the people like this non-governmental body, justice and peace, made a look, and the human rights bodies made a try for see this will matter. <laughs> Thanks indeed, Derek Jato, for that package from the Southwest. Meantime, the governor of the Littoral Region has encouraged students and pupils to make use of the advantages that come of, uh, with being bilingual. Joseph Vita Soma was speaking today while launching activities to mark the 12th edition of the National Bilingualism Day that's built for the 7th of February 2014. Jacob Kekinge tells us more. There is this popular adage in Cameroon which says, Le Cameroon est bilingue, même si les Camerounais ne sont pas. Meaning Cameroon is bilingual, even though Cameroonians are not. The government of Cameroon, through education stakeholders, have for the past years been trying to make Cameroonians, especially the younger generation, very bilingual. We came here just for celebrating this important day and, and just thinking about the the emerging Cameroon. Uh, nous sommes ici pour célébrer le bilinguisme, ce qui, est, ce qui se fait partout au Cameroun. Nous sommes à la 12e journée. Le thème, c'est le bilinguisme pour un Cameroun émergent. It is only of recent that the government and Cameroonians started understanding the importance and the advantages enjoy being bilingual, especially with English posing as a universal language. The government of Cameroon has therefore discovered the importance of bilingualism. That is why, for the past 12 years, a day has been kept aside to celebrate and evaluate the level of bilingualism in our schools. I think uh, so far we can say that uh, in our schools bilingualism has really improved because from what it was 12 years ago, we see that it's, coming, it's entering people's mind that a Cameroonian can be bilingual. And I think that the state of things is really improving. The 2014 edition of the National Bilingualism Day is being celebrated under the theme Bilingualism as Asset for an Emerging Cameroon. So what is the role of bilingualism in the emergence of Cameroon? 
I believe that Cameroonians being bilingual, that is being able to express themselves freely and fluently in English and French, both in writing and uh, speaking. So I believe they can really, uh, uh, they can change their standards of living. So I believe that it can, it can be uh, an asset for, uh, for an emerging Cameroon. The opening ceremony of this year's bilingualism week in the littoral region was characterized by sketches, poems, songs, and traditional dances by students and pupils drawn from different institutions around the Wuri division. The activities will end on the 7th of February 2014 at the government secondary school Makepe. Now situating French-speaking children within the context of a second language remains a major problem to teachers of special bilingual programs that's in the central region of Cameroon. The problem was brought to limelight during the visit of the Secretary of State at the Ministry of Secondary Education in some of bilingual pilot schools that he visited. That was today. I am the base correspondent Roland Akon has more. The government bilingual high school Etukebe is one of the 42 schools in Cameroon hosting the special bilingual education program. The program is a model for the promotion of bilingualism in Cameroon. With the special bilingual education program, we have uh, bilingual classes in which uh, the, the lessons are taught uh, indifferently uh, in English and in French. And you see uh, that uh, you are, it's impressive to see those students, uh, even from one CZM, Bilingue, uh, who express themselves perfectly in uh, both languages. The special bilingual education program is not easy for the beginners. And that's where every child learns his or her first lesson. The main problem is that sometimes they find it difficult to speak in English fluently. But I understand that they are beginners. With time, they will adjust. Teachers have adopted strategies to help the students adjust with the program. Given the fact that they are Francophones, they are not Anglophones, generally I'm a fast speaker, but I go, I make sure that I teach. I explain several times for them to understand. Once in a while, I say some words in French. I speak once in a while in French but to make them understand. Because some of them sometimes, they answer their questions in French. Some of them mix French and English. And sometimes I try to correct them. And sometimes, so in order to perfectly correct them, I'm forced to use French sometimes to explain certain things. Ten thousand students in 41 schools are enrolled in the special bilingual program all over Cameroon. The program admits only the best students from primary school. The first batch of students wrote the Bay APC this year, and those of the English subsystem will sit in for the GCO level this year. The pedagogic inspector here in the littoral region booth uh, will be evaluating the level of bilingualism in the academic milieu that's going to be in the second part of this newscast still in the center region of Cameroon. The Council of the University of Yaoundé One met today. That was during a session. The meeting grouping stakeholders in the institution sought to evaluate the new academic programs and seek ways of integrating them in the school milieu. It was during today's session that the creation of the Faculty of Education, a new department in the Faculty of Medicines and also the Faculty of Wood Processing was also announced. Now, the rector or the, or the vice rector of the University of Yaoundé One further throws more light on the objective of the council session which took place today. Spoke to Roland Ako. It's mainly to look after the, the program of new schools we have. The IUT Bois in Balmayo, the uh, Faculty of Science of Education, which has been created some time ago, and then uh, the Faculty of Medicine in the branch of Pharmacy and uh, Thief. So we, we have to look after those programs in order to adopt them 
and let them to be implemented in our institution. Nine sports football matches counting for the day one of the League One Championship took place in Stadia across the country. And for the encounter that took place here in the economic capital Douala at the Omi Sports Stadium, uh, the Unisport of Bafang beat Astro of Douala by one goal to zero. And for the other encounters that took place across the country, Union of Douala beat Scorpion B by three goals to zero. Fovu lost to New Stars of Douala by zero goal to one. UMS of Lum won against Sablo one. Pantom D three against Tone zero and uh, Jalakwan Sport Academy one against Rinistan zero, Apeges two against Dwala Electric Club zero, Kano of Yaoundé zero against Cosmos two, Bambutus zero against Kotong zero, and just to note that Young Sport Academy of Bamenda is on standby. Now, Jalakwan Sport Academy, as we earlier indicated, beat uh, Renaissance at home by 1 to 0 for the first time. The encounter took place at the Limbe Centenary Stadium, where for Hansen Chanji followed the encounter and now tells us more in the following report. Fans and supporters of Njalakwan Sports Academy trooped in their numbers to watch their darling team take on visitors Renaissance of Gumu in the one action of the League One Football Championship at the Limbe Centenary Stadium. After taking their seat, it was kickoff time. It took the host Njalakwan 10 minutes to open the curtain razor as Bate Eya Asen benefited from defense weakness to slot in the lone goal of the encounter. Fans went wild with joy. The rest of the match was played with the visitors struggling to equalize missing golden opportunities at certain moments but it looked like the lone goal had weakened the morale of renaissance players as well as the coach Zili Pierre receiving his baptism of fire with his new club the coach for renaissance explains that the early goal scored by Angela Kwan Sports Academy had to put them back and therefore it becomes very difficult for his boys to equalize to the coach and players of Njalakwan Sports Academy, it was an opportunity scoring an early goal and carrying the day. We have our first three points. We are waiting for the next match. Not, uh, we are not going to sleep because we want to. It's a team that we are going to build. Uh, although we have our old players who are there, but you know we bring a new fashion and there are some new players. Uh, so that is uh, something that we are going to bet before the tenth of the day. We are going to see a very good team for. For the first time in a while, Jalakwan Sport Academy wins its first game in a new season at home. Now we continue with our package. Our newsroom equally sought to find out what could be impeding sponsorship of local championship across the country. Communication experts say the absence of sponsorship at the Cameroon League 1 and 2 is as a result of lack of confidence on the management of football in the Cameroon's league. They say companies are no longer willing to take the risks of wasting their money. Let's have more once again with for Hansen Chanji. Cameroon's football has a chronic marketing problem. The management of football in the country is plagued with corruption, self-interest and the famous saga between association of clubs and the so-called professional football league. As a result of this growing problem affecting local football, enterprises are afraid to take the risks of venturing into partnership agreements with the various clubs. Uh, when you want to, to invest, you have to, to, to put it in your marketing plan. You, can, you, can, you cannot uh, start by putting money to sponsor like that. You can make to make to make a good study to know that if I take a, a team like uh, Sable or Canon and so on, you must get a, the strong relationship with people who who are in charge of managing this team. When it is there is a link, you put your money. At the start of this new football season, the loan enterprise that used to cough out money to the league withdrew, leaving the championship back to its previous state. Communication and marketing experts have analyzed the situation, thus concluding that no enterprise will want to identify itself with failure. It must be the win-win, win-win partnership. The new football season opens without a sponsor. Too bad for a league that claims to have moved on the path of professionalism. According to our experts, Cameroon has good product, but... Bad selling manager. 
good product that selling manager do we have we, we have to sell it differently local football organizers are therefore called upon to pave way forward for sponsorship by upgrading the level of football and avoiding clashes within themselves this to attract sponsors and avoid the continuous embarrassment and masquerade that characterize local football in the country of Roger Miller and Samuel Eto'o. Now Cameroonian referee Evaris Mekwande has been selected as one of the nine African referees to, uh, by FIFA for the 2014 World Cup that's built for Brazil. The Cameroonian-based international referee has participated in several international competitions, one of which was the 2010 World Cup that was in South Africa. We shall be coming back to that in a subsequent newscast. Now we take you to news out of Cameroon, the final will of the anti apartheid icon now. Mandela has been made public that was today. He left behind an estate worth some four million dollars uh, to be shared within his family members as well as some schools uh, that he attended. Uh, and before quite read through the will of Nelson Mandela and compiled the following report. Reports following the declaration of the will of the former South African President Nelson Mandela revealed he left an estimated $4.13 million, the equivalent of 2.53 million pounds in assets, behind to be inherited by his family and various trusts. It was feared the former South African president's last will and testament would spark more feuding within his large family of 30 children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, but the legal executor of his legacy, Justice Dikang Moseneke, summarizing the 40-page document, said he was not aware of any contest to the will. Close personal staff of Mandela will each receive £2,700, and schools the anti-apartheid hero attended will receive over £5,000. Mandela, who died in December, age 95, also left £5,000 to each of four other educational institutions for bursaries and scholarships. Mr. Moseneke, his legacy's executor, also said the mood of the Mandela family when the will was read was charged with emotions, but it went well, and the family was well pleased by its declaration. The Family Trust will receive just over £800,000 plus royalties. The African National Congress will also receive some royalties to be used at the discretion of the party's executive committee to spread information about the principles and policies of the ANC, particularly about reconciliation. A 90-day period has been set in which the will can be contested before any dispersal will officially be made. And that does it for this segment of the news. Up next, we talk about the National Bilingualism Week or the National Bilingualism Day that's going to be celebrated on the 7th of February 2014. Tonight on Talking Point is the Pedagogic Inspector in Charge of English to Francophones in the Littoral Region. Good evening to you, Mrs. Uh, Nana Martina. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Talking Point. Good evening, Mimi, and thank you for inviting me to your program, and uh, good evening to our televiewers. Should we thank you for joining us. Now, week long activities to mark the 2014 edition of the National Bilingualism Day began today across the country. Now, the theme for this 12th edition is on how to make bilingualism an asset for an emerging Cameroon. Before we come back to reason, the reason why the government decided to choose this particular theme for this edition, it, it, it will seek to find out how far, what could be your assessment of the effectiveness of the policy that was introduced decades ago go in Cameroon, precisely in the academic milieu where you are, you are, you, you, are, you, you where, you, where that's your milieu, the academic milieu. What could be your assessment of the policy of bilingualism? Before coming to the academic milieu, Cameroon's constitution holds in Article Three One that uh, French and English are the official languages, and the two of them have equal strength meaning that each Cameroonian should be comfortable speaking English, speaking French, should understand the culture of the English and the French-speaking people. So once we have that, then we assure natural, national integration, which is part of the policy of the government, would be fostered. And coming now to education, what has happened uh, from nursery to primary, secondary, and university, it has been the policy of government to have French and English instituted as compulsory subjects 
in the curriculum, meaning that in French-speaking schools, you would have English taught as a language, as a compulsory language. In English-speaking schools, you have French taught as a compulsory language. And this has gone on. And the government has brought in many other things to like, promote the teaching of English and French, um, encourage the teaching of English and French. Um, every Wednesday in all schools all over the country, uh, people are expected to, to speak in the other official language. What do I mean? If you are in the French-speaking school, on Wednesday, you should be speaking in English. Every Wednesday of the week. Every Wednesday of the week. But do you think that's actually what happened in schools? Do you think it In happened? principle, it should happen. And we are trying to be sure that it happens, but we, we have no yardstick as yet to tell you that it happens. Uh, but we are encouraging it. Now you talked about English and French being uh, some of the compulsory subjects because we equally know that there's mathematics, mathematics yeah. in primary and secondary schools. Mm -hmm. It could just be written in paper, like English and French, they are compulsory subjects. The, the problem is the, 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 the zeal to learn French by English-speaking students and the zeal to learn English by French-speaking students. For example, when you go to a classroom and you see a, a class, a, like a class that's going on, a particular lesson that is going on in French language, you mm -hmm. see very few uh, French-speaking students attending lessons in those classes. So, so what are what are some of the measures that you are putting in place in the school milieu, to be more specific, to make sure that students have this zeal to learn and know English or French better? Well, um, let me come to it. Our duty is to help English-speaking teachers teach English to French-speaking learners. This means we try to give them all the necessary tools, we try to give them all the necessary methodology that would motivate these learners because one particularity with the French-speaking learners is that they are not interested in learning the English language. And what we do with the teachers when we have seminars or when we go around for counseling, inspections, we try to make them know that they could motivate the students to make meaning out of learning English. First of all, by showing the importance of English. You know, if you go to the theme of this year's bilingualism week, an asset, bilingualism an asset, means English and French, a tool a useful tool for success in 2035. So if the students don't acquire both languages on equal strength, it will become a liability, it will not be an asset. So what we do, we try, we do our best to encourage teachers to also do their best to motivate students. And how do they do that? The way they teach in class. Your teaching must, be, must make meaning to your learners. You should understand your learners. Of course, we would say our classes are overcrowded. Yes, it doesn't matter. We know even if you had 10 children in class, they have varied ways of learning. So if you bring a variety of activities that would motivate them to want to learn that, that language, they will be there to learn the language. And it seems some of these uh, campaigns that you're talking about, maybe sensitization, they are mostly accelerated during this bilingualism, uh, no. uh, week-long activities marking the bilingualism day. Could I say we it is during this period that you try to find out what we do in the field? Because it's not one week that would make So, so what could be your uh, evaluation, basically? Uh, we have a competition that has made me to really revolutionize my thinking of having a mismaster bilingualism. And we've had students who've expressed themselves perfectly in both languages. When they speak English, you will not have the slightest idea that they could speak French. And when they speak French, you just get marveled. So it shows that somewhere along the line, people are becoming aware. That awareness is created. It is true that not every student, I should say not every student, because, okay, scientifically we don't have any facts and figures to prove, but not every student, but the majority. I think the wind is blowing with the majority. 
Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Nana Martina, for joining us tonight on Talking Point. We hope to have you some other time again. Thank you, Mimi. Please remember that the week-long activities are going to be for four or five days. We hope to have you some other time. And there's something that we instituted in all the classes. We have the bilingual game. That means the last 10 minutes of your class, if you were teaching in English, you should speak French. We surely shall be coming back to that in our So I was expecting editions. you to speak French today because... <laughs> Good evening to you once again to our viewers. We thank you so much for being part of us tonight and have a wonderful stay in the company of our programs.